All right, welcome back, friends and neighbors, to another installation of networking videos. Hey, we're going to do some network address translation, and I think I'll break it up into a couple of parts. So here we go with network address translation part one. So if you're asking yourself, what is network translation or where does it fit in the universe? Well, if you've got one of these at home, you are likely doing network address translation. And in fact, most of us, myself including, uh, included, do network address translation in our home networks. And many companies do network address translation on the edge of their networks. So without further ado, let's go over what is network address translation. Well, you can read an awful lot about network address translation in RFCs, particularly uh, RFC 3022 and um, RFC 1918, and they'll describe exactly what an IP network address translator is. And this is kind of what we call traditional NAT, because um, NAT has a bunch of flavors, and we'll talk more about those later on. Uh, so network address translation is a way that we change the internal addresses to look like they're an outside address. And by that, I mean that you've got addresses that you use in your home, and then you've got this box on the edge of your home network. And that's the router, the wireless home gateway, the Linksys box, whatever you want to call it, you got that box. The rest of the world is using what we call public addresses. You are not. It may come as a shock, but you're not using public addresses on your inside network. So what happens is your private network addresses are converted to a public address on the edge of your network. And so the inside network is hidden. And that's why a lot of folks think of NAT as a firewall, but that's not its purpose. And in fact, while we say network addresses are hidden, many times they're not actually hidden at all. And we'll see examples of that as we work through some of the uh, examples of NAT. So again, what is network address translation other than a fun acronym? Uh, it's an address management tool. So we're officially out of IP4 address space. You can't get brand new IP version 4 address spaces. Now, if you go back and look at our IP version 4 uh, videos, you'll know that IP version 4 addresses and IP version 6 addresses are, are controlled, regulated from IANA to the regional internet registries all the way down to ISPs. And a couple of years ago, we had an official announcement. There are no more new IP version 4 addresses to be found, which is, of course, why folks were talking about going to IP version 6. But somebody came up with network address translation, and suddenly the worry, the concern over going to IP version 6 was much less because NAT works pretty doggone well. So again, the magic is that Instead of needing a whole bunch of public addresses for your network, if you put a translator on the edge of your network and use private addresses inside, instead of needing an individual address for every single thing that's in your home, your printer, your Xbox, your computers, your laptops, the, all of that stuff, even cell phones when they're sitting on your home network, um, they only need one. They need one outside public address. So all the traffic appears to come from that single outside network address. So this is sort of a really, really simple view of how this actually works. So on the right-hand side, we've got your inside network. And now we know that those are running private addresses. And then we've got the outside network, which is running public addresses. So we call this the Internet, right? And then in between, the thing that's on the edge of your network is that NAT router. Now we'll fill in some more details later on to you know, sort of flesh this out and, and do some examples of addressing here. But this is this gives you the general idea that we're going to make the distinction between inside and outside and public and private addressing. Okay, so what is private addressing? Well, you can go look these up if you read RFC 1918. These are all described in there. And the whole point of private addresses is so that we can have something that is non-global that allows us to work with network address translation. Now there are three address ranges, 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. This is your class C address range. 
172.16.00 to 172.31.255.255. 255. This is our class B. And then we have the 10 net, which is our class A. And so what I'm telling you is that if you are running a network address translation box, and then you're going to um, deploy private addresses, these private addresses are not used in the public internet space at all, ever. Now we use them all over the place. But what's important to note is that public networks and public naming systems don't use private addresses. So the important point about the addressing types is that the outside interface on your network address translation box, your router, has to have a global presence, has to have a public internet address. Now there are some exceptions, right? You can run a NAT box behind another NAT box and get away with things like that. But generally speaking, in the example that we're using here, the outside network is public and uses globally unique public addresses. The inside network is private and uses private addresses. And then these are what are translated to the outside global public address. Now you can have lots and lots of, of private addresses. Uh, universities like RIT use large numbers of private addresses to cover lab space and, and educational spaces all the time. Conferences a lot of times are run behind NAT boxes. And the only thing that's really our limiting factor is how good is the router at handling all this translation. And we'll see later on, translation is a significant amount of work. But we'll save that for another, another day. The last point that I'll make today is that the, we have a DNS problem. Not really, but it's, it's something that's worth noting. And that is, if we're using private addresses, and they all come from the same address pools, that means everybody, me, you, your neighbor, they could all be using the same addressing. And that's in fact what happens. You buy the same Linksys box as your neighbor, you're using the exact same private addressing space as your neighbor. And the magic, of course, is that we translate that. But how would we, how would we reach servers? Servers are reached through DNS. We don't usually know the IP addresses of servers. We go to a name and that is resolved to an IP address. And so the, the thing that I'm sort of underscoring here is that public DNS does not use private addressing either. That wouldn't make any sense. All of us would be trying to use the same addresses. And so that's why many companies, or when you're running behind a NAT box, you have a, your own local DNS or domain name service server to host up all of those private addresses or hosts servers that resolve to private addresses. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, coming up next, we're going to do NAT part two, and I am going to try and get back to regular Friday videos, either building stuff or talking about a particular topic. We've got lots and lots of networking stuff out there, including some new SDN stuff that I'm, I'm working on in the lab. So we'll do that uh, coming up. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for listening, and may your packets always reach their destinations.